agenda for today's talk is I will just start very quickly by um, just clarifying some terms okay, when we talk about accessibility and we'll also talk about standard compliance. What does it mean? Okay. I will then move to uh, talking about tag PDF, the basis of PDF accessibility, a uh, little bit higher level than what uh, Matthew has gone over uh, yesterday. Uh, and then we will discuss methods to achieve standard compliance, whether you're starting from the source format and what issues you can run into, and if you're starting from the PDF document and what issues you can run into. And I will also talk about some of the tools that are available for validation. So we've already gone through the introduction. I guess I will uh, skip this uh, slide of who we are. So we, we hear the term accessible, <coughs> but it's, it's really a very vague term. And it means different things to different people. Uh, lots of people use the term accessibility or accessible and usable interchangeably when actually they may not necessarily be the same. Uh, so what, what does it mean for a document to be accessible? Uh, is it accessible to all people of all disabilities? So for example, if I say that a document is PDF-UA compliant, is it accessible to somebody with a cognitive disability? It might be accessible to somebody with, uh, who is, for example, visually impaired, but not to somebody with cognitive disability. Okay. So, it's not really a measurable term. When you say it's accessible, it's not really measurable. I personally prefer, um, uh, prefer the term standard compliant. Okay. Because I can really measure this. If I can say, for example, this document is Section 508 compliant, this document is WCAG 2A compliant, or WCAG 2 AA compliant, okay? So this is clear, what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, and I can measure it, and I can improve on it. But to just say that the document is accessible, for example, in the US means that it's Section 508 compliant, but if you if you take this document to Canada, it's considered inaccessible because it has to be AA compliant. Okay, to AA compliant. Okay? So with the uh, part we're really interested in right now is, is PDF accessibility. And the basis of PDF <coughs> accessibility is a tagged PDF. You can get to a tagged PDF uh, <coughs> through multiple ways, but in all cases, what does it really mean to have a tagged PDF? If you look at the PDF specs, we need basically to have to demarcate content as Matthew was describing yesterday, and put in the content stream containers around text and images. Okay. And you map, or sorry, tag real content into tags, and you tag uh, artifacts into artifact containers. You also need, so tags would point to either containers or point to annotations such as links or form fields or other kinds of annotations like video, uh, video annotations or uh, sound annotations. There are also tags related structures that are not really uh, seen by everybody, okay? And uh, so these include something like the parent tree, which map, because you have uh, mapping from the tags to the content stream, and you also need to have mapping back from the content stream to the tags, okay? So you need this parent tree, and you also have the ID tree, which uh, ensures that all IDs for tags are unique. Now, why are we mentioning this? Because any problem in these structures would cause problems in your remediation. Okay. 
and not all PDF creation tools are created equal. Some create, create a lot of problems in these structures. Okay. We'll discuss a little bit more about that uh, later. Now, tags should also have the right semantics. You should be using um, headings where headings should be used, tables, figures, lists, etc. You also should need to, or need to put these tags in the right order. And you need to provide certain attributes for tags. So, for example, uh, you need to provide alternative text or actual text. You provide list numbering for tables. You provide scope for header cells. Uh, all the characters or character IDs need to map to Unicode values correctly as well. So this is something that has to be done in your fonts. Your word breaks should be defined correctly. Well, uh, the example that uh, Marcus was showing with the missing spaces. So the first part uh, I will discuss. Sorry, I think I'm. Oops. I apologize. I think I'm loading the wrong <laughs> presentation. Sorry, just one minute, please. I'm very sorry about that. you can catch issues early. Okay. So if, for example, you're using color to convey information, you can catch that in the source document. Okay. If you're using styles, same thing. Uh, if fonts are corrupt or need to be or uh, cannot be embedded legally, then you can replace them with different fonts, right, in the source document. <coughs> There is also the fact that alternative text is best provided by the author, right? I mean, as much as you know, we would like to believe that we're able to provide alternative text for figure, when you get a document, say, from NASA, and it has a certain figure in it, I probably cannot really provide meaningful alternative text for it, right? In addition to the fact that, of course, I can't provide uh, diff like meaningful alternative text <coughs> to documents in all languages. I may be able to remediate the document, but probably not provide alternative text for images. Right? Now, the approach to doing this is to design or structure the source document. Like, put as much 
uh, effort into designing the document as possible early on. So if you're, for example, using Word, you can use styles. Uh, don't just you know, change the format, uh, make the font bigger, etc. But use styles such as heading ones and twos. Uh, so that it can be converted to PDF, to PDF tags as well. And also uh, use tables, uh, use lists correctly, etc. Uh, another example is to order the elements in for the different uh, content holders, as they call them in, uh, in uh, PowerPoint. Right? So they're not paired out of sequence. And you, can, and you should also use fully embeddable fonts. Fonts that you know you're free to embed uh, for unlimited use in your PDF. Uh, but you also need to uh, deduce and collect missing attributes. Now, what does that mean? We'll discuss that here in the issues. Uh, not all document <laughs> formats contain all the information uh, that's needed for an accessible PDF. So for example, Word, Microsoft Word doesn't define row headers. You can define column headers in, in a bit of a weird way, okay, by just defining that the columns repeat on every uh, page. But row headers cannot be defined. Okay, so you need to, while you're still at the source, you need to collect this information. You can't get it from Word, so you, you should have another method of, of getting that information. Okay, you can either, like most people would do, collect the, or sorry, generate the PDF and then uh, convert the cells to header cells and assign them a scope of row, or you can collect that information if you control the uh, the generation of the PDF early on. Uh, also, there is no concept of column span or row span. You can merge cells, but you can't query Word and ask it how many columns does this cell span, or how many rows does this cell span. And that's why you notice that a lot of PDF generators would be missing these attributes or would, would generate incorrect attributes, especially at the last cell, at the cell at the uh, uh, edge of the table. Okay? Uh, also, there is no concept of header scope. And there is no concept of linked headers for complex tables. In most of, say, in, in, in Word and PowerPoint. Okay? Uh, so this is some of the limitations in the, in the source format itself, but then we, we also encounter some limitations in the PDF generators. Okay, so some PDF generators trim spaces at end of lines, <coughs> which would cause, uh, which would cause, sorry, uh, an issue of the text running together, the last word in the first line with the first word in the second line, right? Um, some PDF generators don't generate structure correctly as well. You notice if you generate a table in Microsoft Word, you will notice always that there is a, under the table row, there's a span with a collection of all the lines that are surrounding the row, right? Which is semantically incorrect. Uh, some PDF generators also generate IDs without creating an ID tree. Okay. And also there's the fact that you need human intervention for you know, providing alternate text and so on. Uh, now, some of the tools, just because this question comes up sometimes, uh, some of the tools that are that you know generate PDF from the source uh, include you know Adobe Acrobat, uh, Word and PowerPoint, and InDesign generate documents, uh, generate PDF documents. There are also specialized tools that specialize in, in, in generating tag documents from the source. Uh, 
I'm giving two examples here, uh, Common Look Office and, and Access PDF for, uh, for Word, uh, PowerPoint tools, and design tools, uh, and also others that generate from other sources or other formats. Okay. So what if you have, uh, if you just got a PDF? and you want to make that accessible, and you don't have the source format. Now, there are also advantages to this. One of which is, you are able to deal with a PDF from any source. Okay, so I don't care, uh, again, just like Adam was saying the, uh, the other day, I just want the PDF. Keep your source document, I just want your PDF. I just want the PDF. Right, and I'll deal with it. Uh, so, that's an advantage. The other advantage is a fixed layout. Sometimes we run into issues when, you know, uh, the client would send me a document, a, a Word document, and I would convert it to PDF, and then they would say, you know, no, my, P my Word document was five pages, and you, I ended up with six pages, and there are differences in, in page sizes or something like that. So if you receive a document that's PDF, you at least eliminate this uh, part. Okay. Now, the approach that you follow for making a document accessible or, or standard compliant, uh, if you receive a PDF, is depending on whether the document is tagged or not. If it's not tagged, uh, you tag it using Acrobat. Now, Acrobat will try to do everything that we've discussed earlier, or at least do a first take on it. Okay, so it will try to guess the structure, the semantics, it will create a parent tree, an ID tree, and all that kind of stuff. Okay? And we'll also try to, if, in some cases, deduce the Unicode mapping of certain bots. Okay? Now, after you've tagged the document, you need to review the structure, review the order, uh, provide the missing attributes, etc., and maybe go through validation as well. Now, what are some of the issues that you would encounter? There are issues that prevent the document, or document issues that provide the document from even be being tagged. You could run into this issue when you run, try to run add tags to document in Acrobat, and Acrobat would fail. It would say that I'm unable to. would complain either about fonts and font structures, incorrect CMAPs, stuff like that. It would also complain about incorrect page structure, like the internal structure of the document, the document syntax itself would be corrupt. And this is the reason being mostly <coughs> about PDF generation, generating software. <coughs> okay. So, uh, it, this issue also sometimes happens when you merge documents. Okay. Okay. Now, there are issues that result from that. Uh, now, I don't know if these can be ca uh, characterized as bugs or whatever, but uh, these are things that you have, we have noticed by tagging you know, thousands of uh, PDFs over the years. Uh, you sometimes notice that some invisible text was made visible after tagging. Or the other way around, that some visible text was turned invisible. Okay? And this is what we, say, what we mean by changes from render mode 0 or 1 or 2 to 3 or from 3 to 0. Okay, so <coughs> that's the technical term. Also, you notice that sometimes certain text gets bolded after you tag it. Or also, some bolded text lose, uh, uh, turns into normal. Okay. This happens rare, rarely, but it does happen. Okay, so the, just things to, to watch for. Uh, also, sometimes when you tag the document, you will notice that the, the, the text is completely corrupt. Like if you look in the content view, you will just see garbage. Although the document in the physical view maps correctly, 
or reads correctly, if you look in the content view, the Unicode mapping is messed up. So the character index to the glyph ID, uh, what uh, uh, also Matthew was describing yesterday, is correct. But the character index to the uh, Unicode values is messed up. Now you need to fix the Unicode tables for the fonts. Um, there are also, sometimes for certain fonts, in certain circumstances, you will find that uh, the spaces will not be inserted. Even though you read that the document, and in most cases, this issue will disappear, but in some cases, you will still have the missing spaces between words, <coughs> so word breaks. Also, uh, sometimes you would get a corrupt physical view. So you tag the document, and a complex vector image would be messed up. Certain things would disappear, certain colors would disappear, certain parts of the image would disappear, and so on. Now, even when you get a tagged document and you're just supposed to start working with it, uh, just fixing the issues, okay, and fixing the order and providing attributes, uh, there could be issues also in the document syntax, issues in the parent tree, and issues in the ID tree. Now, the symptoms that you would notice in these cases are, you know, you're trying to move one tag from one place to the other and Acrobat wouldn't do it. And if you try to do it programmatically, it would crash. Right? The reason mostly has to do with the uh, parent tree. Okay. Uh, in, in all cases, whether it's a tagged or an untagged document, you may need to embed fonts because the fonts may not have been embedded. Um, you may run into the issue of having to split certain text runs, because parts of those text runs belong to one tag, maybe, for example, two columns or uh, two data cells, so they need to be tagged separately. So you need to split text runs. That's also not very easy to do. Um, Sometimes you run into cases where text style has meaning. In, in some, uh, I'll show this example later in, the, uh, uh, in, in my next session, you have cases where the document says, you, if you have, say, a list of medicine or medications, it would say brand names are capitalized and generic drugs are shown in lowercase italic, right? So all this information is not available to the user using assistive technologies, right? So you need to provide this information in an alternate format. Maybe you should say, you know, I don't know what medicine next year, just because I take it. Is, uh, and this is a brand name drug or you know, um, whatever other drug is uh, generic. Okay, so you need to say generic and Nexium, or sorry, uh, generic drug and then brand name drug, etc. Okay? You could also have certain symbols that have special meaning. And these symbols can't be read. For example, you can have, I don't know, a diamond or a heart or some weird character that means, you know, there is uh, also for, for say, uh, directories of medications and stuff that, that this is, that, or sorry, for pharmacies that this provides drugs for 90 days or this pharmacy provi provides accessible parking or this, and so on. Okay, so they're just small symbols, but they carry a lot of information. And these symbols cannot be read aloud, so you also need to provide another method of, of conveying this information. Color may have special meaning. You could have all negative <coughs> colors, or all negative numbers in red, for example. Okay, but that information may not be available to assistive technology. Okay. 
Again, I'm listing here some tools that are used for uh, fixing the document syntax and also tools that are used for fixing structure from the PDF itself. Uh, now, once you've done, once you've made your document or you think you've made your document accessible, you can run it into uh, or through validation tools just to make sure that you are compliant. You're supposing, that uh, assuming that the tool supports the standard you are trying to validate against. Uh, also listing some tools here for uh, our desktop tools or validating PDF and also some enterprise tools for, uh, for validating PDF. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it. I'm open to questions now. Don't be shy. Interesting, and, and my question is perhaps not just to you, but to all the vendors, because some of the problems you've mentioned here have come across them as well, and I haven't been uh, making thousands of PDF accessible, <laughs> just in the hundreds. Uh, and my question would be, uh, how do your programs or your applications deal with those problems? Okay, so uh, I'll be demonstrating. I'll be demonstrating uh, some of our tools uh, at, I can't remember, sorry, if it's 2.30 or 2.15. Uh, we, have, we have tools that fix, like we have tools that can basically reconstruct the data tree. Uh, we have, or it's, it's within our common look tool. We also have, uh, like provide features to make, you know, to fix, say, You know, the, the text style having special meanings, the uh, uh, color having special meanings, the symbols have special meanings. We have tools to help fix that. Okay? It's all through providing additional alternative text. Okay? Well, it, it makes things much easier. Um, now, aside from that, uh, for problems like with, with render mode, uh, we use like uh, programming to do it. So we basically go to where we need to and, and switch the render mode either to uh, invisible or visible. Uh, same thing, we have also special tools for, uh, uh, but these are internal tools, <laughs> for uh, Unicode mapping and all that sort of stuff. So it does not apply to, you, to your... Uh, the Unicode mapping, no, we haven't yet applied it. Uh, it's, a, it's an internal tool, but Almost everything else that I've discussed, uh, we deal with it in, in, in our commercially available tool. Albert Jensen, sign approved. Uh, Duff mentioned yesterday that uh, there are 136 failure conditions for complying with the standard. And he said also that uh, 87 of them can be checked by machine and 47 must be checked by humans. You mentioned validators. The last 47 that must be checked by humans, I guess they cannot be checked by the, by the validators. That's correct. However, what we do in this case is we, we list a user verification entry for each of the ones that we are unable to automatically validate. Um, and in, in some cases, you can you can decide whether a certain checkpoint is applicable or not. And then if, it's not, if it is applicable, then it needs user verification. And if it's not applicable, then you, know, you, you, you don't have to worry about it. But for these cases, when you actually need to do user verification, 
we, we list them, I mean, we, our tool basically generates a list of issues, passed, failed, user verified, warnings, etc. And you can go through each one of them and uh, set it manually to pass or fail for these cases. So if you need to inspect it visually, you can do that and then decide whether something passes or fails and then generate a report that contains only pass or fail. Okay. Other questions? Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.